Hello, my name is Tracy Schrepfer and I'm a professor here at the Sandra Rosenbaum School of Social Work and I am also the admissions chair. And the reason I'm talking with you today is to provide you um, with some tips and strategies for writing and submitting a successful application. So I'm just going to walk you through things, um, the different parts, and also I want to say that um, we really like to be transparent, so all the tips and strategies that I'm giving you um, are based on how I train the reviewers so that in essence what I tell the reviewers in training to look for what's problematic and what is not problematic is what I'm going to tell you all today. So we're going to get started and I'm going to start with the supplemental application. Um, you will go into the graduate school application to start the process um, but then you will move into the supplemental application and so I just want you to know when you're in the supplemental application um, a couple of things uh, will be on that application. One will be special circumstances. Um, if you have experienced um, any kind of uh, upheaval in your family, any kind of events or whatever traumatic events that impacted you for a semester. So let's say that you've been making really good grades and then you have a semester where you don't. Special circumstances is the place to include this. Um, it is unlimited in terms of the number of words. There is a box and you just fill that in. Um, so I highly encourage you to do so. The more detailed, the better. We don't, you don't need to tell us confidential things, but just not saying family issue. Um, but give us more than that. The other thing is, due to COVID, um, we're aware that students have really struggled. Last, you know, last spring there was the um, disruption. Uh, no, it was the spring before. We had the disruption. We went into the fall. Um, uh, I know our classes were on Zoom, and I know it's not true for all universities, but for a good portion of them. Not all students felt um, that Zoom was uh, good in terms of their learning it, or that it showed how well they knew the material, etc. Um, and then that was true for spring as well. So during that kind of period of COVID, um, we are going to look at those grades or place a little bit less emphasis on those. So, um, but it doesn't hurt to explain in the special circumstances if COVID impacted you in a particular way. Let's say you had children at home that you were trying to teach, etc. So do let us know. The other thing I want to mention about um, the supplemental application is the focus area choices. So we have focus areas and uh, like mental health, um, health and aging, policy, and um, child, youth, and family welfare. And if you already have a BSW, you need to choose two focus areas. Your first choice, what would be your top choice for a focus area? And then in case our field placements are full, what would be your second area? If you do not have a BSW and you're coming in or applying as a first year MSW student, then you don't need to fill out the focus area. And then you will um, need to upload your analytic essay, but I'm going to talk about that um, next. So uh, in terms of your, you've got two essays that you'll do. Analytic essay you'll upload um, to the um, graduate school, I mean the personal statement you'll upload to the graduate school application and the analytic essay you'll upload to the supplemental application. I'm going to start with the personal statement. Um, that one is shorter um, and so I'm just going to go through each question and kind of tell you what it is that I tell reviewers to look for. One thing I do want to say is that we pay close attention to the formatting the formatting and every all the instructions that I am telling you today for the most part are on our application page. So please go to our website, uh, click on admissions at the top, 
and then you'll go down um, and choose MSW application and then that will take you right into the instructions. We have instructions for the part-time program uh, and the full-time. Everything that I'm telling you now is the same for the part and the full. Okay, so in terms of the personal statement, um, it's made up of three questions and the personal statement is not one where you need to uh, make it into an essay. That's why we call it a statement. What we want you to do is it's going to be about it, three pages in length, not more than that. Um, we ask that you use page numbers. We ask that you do a 12 point times uh, new Roman font as well as double spacing and one inch margins. And then what you do is you take the question that is on our website and copy it and paste it right into a Word doc and then answer that question. Then take the second one, paste it into the Word doc, answer it. And then the third is the same thing, paste and answer. There's no need for an intro or conclusion because this is not an essay. Just be sure that you follow the directions because following directions is also something that the reviewers are trained to notice that if students or applicants don't follow instructions, you know, that, that says something about being ready for grad school um, So and, and not anything positive. So you really want to pay close attention to the instructions. So first question in the statement is, what are your professional goals and how might UW-Madison's MSW program best provide the knowledge, skills, and practice necessary for meeting those goals? So what we are looking here, what we are looking for is that you have specific professional goals and that the goals that you have align with the social work profession. Um, and the the thing that uh, would be would lower your score on this question would be if you talked about helping people. Um, we know that people going into the social work profession, that's what we want to do, right? We, we want as much as possible to work with people and support them in um, meeting the needs they have. Um, so that doesn't really tell us much. So don't focus on the helping people, but rather Talk about your specific goals and then talk about how the social work profession um, aligns with those goals. The more specific, the, the, the more that the goals align, that is a higher score on the application, then if the scores are kind of, I mean if the goals are kind of vague or non-existent um, or if they focus too much on your own issues. So. I certainly understand that um, sometimes the reason that we choose social work or that our goals in social work, um, the ones that we have, are focused maybe on something that happened for us. Let's say that I am um, an adult who, as a child, was placed in foster care and the social worker was amazing and I felt like I trusted. Um, them so much and I felt really supported. And maybe that is linked to uh, your professional goal of wanting to work in foster care or even to be a social worker. Um, and so you can talk about that, but that should be brief. It shouldn't be that it's your life story that, you know, or that the focus is on all the details of your story. But rather that would be sufficient, just what I said, and then move on um, to how that fits in with your goals. Sometimes we have applications where people tell their stories and, and um, we do care, but that doesn't tell us about your fit for the profession. And that's really what we're looking at is, do your goals fit with the profession? The second, um, um, and also um, in addition to that, um, the other part of that is not only how it fits with the, do they fit with the profession, we will be looking at that, but we also want you to tell us why UW-Madison. So we want to see that you've gone on our website and that you know what we have to offer. Um, and for example, if you're interested in aging, that you know that there are professors, that that is their area of expertise, that there are classes that we offer on aging. 
um, that we have a field unit so that there are actual field placements in aging, um, that you understand our fields model. So we want to make sure that we are a good fit for what you need. When it's not a good fit, then that lowers your score. So um, make sure that you really um, give detail. Okay, that's question number one. Question number two is, the social work profession values and strives to promote diversity in regards to social workers' traits, identities, um, culture, experiences, skills, and perspectives. How will you, as an individual, contribute to the diversity of the profession? Diversity is many things, and so that's why we list it in terms of diversity in regard to traits, how you self-identify, your culture, but also your experiences, your skills, your perspectives. We're diverse in many different ways. And so um, I know that um, sometimes applicants who identify as Caucasian or white will say, but I'm not diverse. Yes, you are diverse. You're just diverse in different ways in terms of, could be your identities in terms of, you know, gender identity, um, in terms of um, that maybe you're from working class or first generation. Um, it, there's a lot that, that leads to diversity in each and every individual. So really focus on that. Um, and then how does that contribute to the profession? Um, a quick example would be, so I'm first generation, and so I feel like one way that um, I contribute to my job is that I mentor a lot of first generation students because they feel like I understand what it is um, because I'm a first generation and so that I have some understanding of what's that's, what that's like. So, you know, it, it can be that. Um, it can be your experiences in that way. And then how would that contribute to the diversity of the profession? Um, certainly being a male, we desperately need um, men because we have clients who say, I would really like um, a male social worker. So think very specifically about you as an individual and then how you're going to contribute to the diversity of the profession. The third question. Um, oh, and let me say that um, before I go on, that what makes for a strong application here is the critical self-reflection, that you really sit down and thought about, okay, how I am, what is my diversity um, in regard to all the things that are listed in this question? Um, and you don't have to answer every single one of the things, it just may be some things stand out more, like maybe your experiences stand out more in terms of diversity. Um, and I, we want to see that you've really thought about it and that your answer is not kind of just, you know, very ambiguous um, or very rote. We really want to see that you've given thought to it and, um, and that you provide um, detail. Okay, third question. That is, reflect on a time when you were confronted with a specific situation that challenged your thoughts on an issue. Now, in your response, we have three pieces to this question. Um, the first is briefly describe the specific situation. The second is discuss how you were challenged to think differently about the issue. And third, explain if you ended up thinking differently and why or why not. And I'm gonna take each of the parts of those questions um, and talk about what makes for a strong response. So one thing in the question, it says, reflect on a time when you were confronted with a specific situation. And then we ask you to describe that situation. And what we want is for you to think of a specific situation. It could be at work where something occurred. Um, it could be in a class where something occurred, you know, wherever. And what we want you to describe that situation so we know what was going on and so that's the first piece of that and so if it's ambiguous and we really in and it's more of like across my life I've been confronted with this situation no a specific one then the second part of this is 
to discuss how you were challenged to think differently about the issue. So there is an issue that's, occur that's, that's occurring within this situation. Um, and when the issue was happening, you know, the, you were confronted with a situation where the person um, was thought differently. You know, it could be a teacher who's telling you something where you don't think like that or you're not sure you agree. Um, and so what was the challenge? Um, what, how were you asked to think differently? And it could be your pop, your boss, a colleague, etc. And then, um, in that regard, again, what is the, we want to see some really critical self-reflection. Um, not that you would just say um, politics, but really talk to us about what it is um, that, you know, you're feeling challenged about um, and to think differently. And then the third is explain if you ended up thinking differently and why or why not. If you didn't end up thinking differently, that does not in any way impact your score for the, on the application. But what would impact it is how you explain it, and that is just telling us why that instead of just saying, well, I didn't end up thinking differently. But explain why you didn't. So, and then if you did end up thinking differently, explain why. And again, this goes back to critical reflection and providing us with details so that we have an understanding so that when we read the, the um, answer to the question, that we have, you know, a good idea about um, the whole, the situation, um, the thinking differently, and where you ended up. So it's a story but we lay out the three components of the story that we're looking for. Um, the, those are the three questions. And then the other thing that we'll be looking at is we're always going to be looking at grammar. And that is, you know, do you have misspellings? Um, is, do you have sentences that are incomplete? So I always say go to a writing center um, or talk to someone who and not just a fellow student, I would choose someone who maybe has written statements before um, or who is an English major or, you know, find somebody who can read it and do two things. One, read it for, you know, the grammar, the spelling, organization, etc. cetera, uh, but also um, give them the questions and say, am I answering the questions? So that, we definitely will be looking at that in terms of your personal statement. Okay. Now, the next thing is your analytic essay. And this one we use the term essay because this truly is an essay where we want an intro and we want a conclusion. So you're not pasting in the question and answers like you did with the personal statement. Here, you truly are writing an essay. So be sure that you have that introduction be sure that you have that conclusion because that is part of what um, the reviewers will be looking at. Um, and then the body of your essay. So let me read you, I'm going to read again the whole question and then I'm going to break it down into parts. So this is the question. Thinking critically about social justice issues is a key skill for both professional social workers and those studying to become one. Choose a social justice issue about which you feel strongly and would like to address as a future social worker. Thinking critically, describe one, the issue. Two, why social workers would think this is an important issue to address. Three, at least one relevant system, one relevant policy, and one relevant practice, and explain how each of those contributes to the issue. And in your description note, when you're talking about a system, a policy, or a practice. So it's very easy for us to tell that. And four, the action steps social workers could take to create change around this issue. Okay. So now I'm going to break it down into parts. Okay. Um, and so uh, in regard to the first part, and that is choose a social justice issue about which you feel strongly and would like to address as a future social worker, one, 
describe the issue. So here, what we're really looking at is that you describe a social justice issue clearly. And I would recommend one that you have passion about because I think that changes your writing um, when you are more involved in the topic. Um, the other thing is don't make it a huge issue like um, systemic racism where it's so huge um, it's kind of hard to write about. Systemic raci racism, there's different components you could talk about. Um, there are things that have been happening in the news that you could choose in terms of a social justice issue. It can be whatever one is brings you passion. But the first part of that, we're looking to see that you describe the issue very clearly, um, that you demonstrate critical thinking, and that there's depth to the issue. So you don't just make a statement, a, a critical thought, and then not explain it. Okay. Um, the, so if it's superficial, if it's not well described, it lacks critical thinking, the response is superficial, then what that's going to result in is a lower score on your application. Okay. So part two of the question then is, thinking critically, describe why social workers would think this is an important issue to address. So here, we really want to understand that you can make that connection between this social justice issue and the field of social work. Um, social justice is the foundation of our profession, and we want to see that you understand that as well. So thinking about it, why would social workers feel like, you know, that really is an, you know, an important issue? So we want you to describe the importance really clearly, and not just that um, everybody deserves whatever it is. You need to go deeper than that. Um, and then, and, and that's that depth piece. So if it's not clear why it's important, or there really was a lack of critical thinking, or the response was superficial, or you didn't address the question, because that's the other thing, if if you miss one of these four pieces, that's going to lower your score. Okay. Part three. Thinking critically, describe at least one relevant system, one policy, and one practice, and explain how each contributes to the issue that you've chosen. And then in your description, um, note when you are talking about a system, policy, or practice. Sometimes it's really hard for the reviewers to tell if if, if it's a system, a policy, or practice, they know, but we don't know if you know. And so if you're talking about a system, then say this system, blah, 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 or this policy, blah, 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 or this practice. You know, let us know which of those that you're talking about. The other thing here is that you have to have one of each. So it's not that you choose either one system, one policy, or one practice, but that you have one of each. And if you want to add a second of one of those, that's fine too. We're not going to take off points for that. We just want to make sure we have one of each. So we'd want you to, again, do a good job describing what the system, the policy, or the practice is. Explain such that we truly understand how um, the, the relationship between those policies and practice and the issues um, so that we're not trying to think, well, why was that policy chosen? How does it relate to the issue? Um, so we should be able to see that clearly by what you write. And then again, critical thinking and depth. And you'll notice I keep saying that over and over because what for graduate school and especially a program in social work, critical thinking is so crucial, as is depth. Um, when you work with clients, you have to have that critical thinking skills um, in order to be an effective social worker. Um, so we put a lot of emphasis on that when the reviewers are reviewing the applications. Um, so again, if, you know, if it's the policy, the practice, or the system's not clear, and, you know, you don't connect it to the issue, or, or, and and you there's it's you know, kind of a, a lack of critical thinking, all of that, again, that will lower your score. 
And then part four of the question is, thinking critically, describe the action steps social workers could take to create change around this issue. And notice that I emphasize um, action steps because we want you to think about what action steps could be taken by a social worker, not what we would think, but how would we actually, um, uh, what actions would we take to make that change? Um, and so, because social work, um, the way we train our students is to train them as change agents. Our foundation is, of the profession is social justice. And so change, advocacy, et cetera, are all key to being a strong social worker. So we're really looking at your critical thought here. We want the steps to be very clear, very well thought out, um, and clearly related to the issue. Um, if we're not going to take off points because we think, well, that'll never work, um, that's not what we're gonna do. You come up what you feel are the action steps to address the issue. That's what we're looking for is that you can do that critical thinking. And then remember uh, the writing of your essay. So now you're talking about an essay with the intro and conclusion, the body of it, etc. You don't want to write it in such a way that you're just kind of answer the question, answer the question, answer the question, the four parts. They can weave together. It could be that um, you don't, you maybe you start with the issue, but you you feel like what's next is maybe not the next question. We just want to make sure that all four questions are answered and, and that it is done in a way that really um, we see that you do understand uh, social justice, the field of social work, um, and, and you're a good fit. Be sure, again, have someone read it. Everything I said about the personal essay applies here as well. Um, and writing centers, oftentimes, like our writing center, you don't have to be a student. You can be from the community and you can use it. So if you are not in school at this time and you're thinking writing center, um, contact your uh, local, contact the local university or the one you graduated from with your undergraduate and um, see if they have services for non-students or students, alums of the university. The next part I'm going to talk about um, are the letters of introduction. And in terms of the letters of introduction, um, this is a really important piece. Um, I strongly recommend that here you read the instructions on our website really closely. I will say that students who, oftentimes this is an area where students may not receive um, a, a strong score. Um, but it's oftentimes not the not what is written in the letter, but it's who the letter's from. So let me talk through this. Um, you have to have three letters of recommendation. And they all should be from someone who knows you professionally and or academically, but not personally. Because then the person is not objective. We want the recommenders to be someone who can assess your ability to do graduate level work. Um, as well as uh, your potential for social work practice. And so that is really important. Um, sometimes we found that, so as faculty, when we write letters, we're trained to write letters of recommendation. Um, but if you, are, if you are getting a letter from your supervisor, um, at you know Walmart or you know anywhere else, it may be that they haven't had much experience in writing letters of recommendation. Um, and so what we do is we provide on our website a section that you can actually just kind of um, uh, copy and give to them, and that it explains to them that the letter should be one full page in length, that it should discuss the skills and abilities that you possess to be a strong candidate. Um, and so it kind of helps them with knowing that's what they want. They don't want just a paragraph. They truly want a full letter. It's really nice when there is uh, the logo of the company um, and a signature, um, although sometimes that's not possible, um, and we don't um, lower your score for that. 
let your recommender know that they're going to receive an email from the graduate school so that they can be watching for it. And they will be asked questions like information on how long they've known you and in what professional and or academic capacity. Um, there'll be a short questionnaire that um, rating your scales and your character traits. And then they'll upload the letter that they've written. Uh, what we suggest is one of the reasons that um, sometimes applications are not reviewed is because the applicant didn't get their letters in by the deadline. And your letters have to be in by the deadline of January 10th. So you can at any time open an application for the program. Uh, you'll f fill out a little bit of information. You don't have to have your essays ready, none of that. Um, and you can go to the letter of recommendation portion of the application. Go ahead and enter, like let's say I was your recommender, enter my information and my email address, and then it will automatically, without you submitting the application, don't submit the application because you're not done yet, right? You've got your essays and all of that. It will automatically generate an email that will come to me. Doing that sooner rather than later is really important because January 10th is right after the holidays and you don't know what your recommenders um, you know, are going to be doing for the holidays, if they're going to be available. So I like it when I start getting um, letter of recommendation requests in October, November, the sooner the better. And then I can do them when I have time. It's really hard when they come in at the last minute. And sometimes, um, like I said, some recommenders don't get them in on time, but it's usually because the applicant waited too long to enter the information to generate the email. So that is like, as soon as you can do it, do it. Um, and uh, it is your responsibility to make sure that the letter gets in. It's not the recommenders. So if the letter doesn't get in, it's not, it, it will be your responsibility and we will not be able to review the application. So be sure, um, you'll be able to check to see um, if you, as your letters come in, looking at your student portal. And it will show you as the letters come in. And then you can send reminders if you're getting nervous. That's what I did when I was applying. Okay, some do's and don'ts. Do you need an academic letter? Yes. Current students or those who graduated after August 2019 must have one academic letter. If you don't, then we deny your application. So be sure that if you are a current student or graduated after August 2019 that you get an academic letter. Um, and it really does need to come from an instructor who knows you well and can evaluate your work. It's hard sometimes when um, you've been in a large class, uh, we've had this where we'll get a letter and the letter will say something like, um, you know, Tracy was uh, a good student. I can't say more than the fact that I gave her an A, uh, but she was a good student. Be sure that the professor knows you. And also if there's a TA, the TA, we, TA, the letters just from a TA are not considered strong. We need it from a TA and the faculty member because both of them know about your academics. Um, so be sure to, to pay attention to that. And then the other people that can write your letters, you can have more than one academic letter if you want, but also employment or volunteer supervisors, um, they can as well. Your score will be lowered if your letters are from friends, family members, neighbors, co-workers, colleagues, personal counselors, therapists, clergy. Those are people, one, that's very personal, they are not professional, and the other is they don't know you, um, they know you on too much of a personal level. So like even co-workers and colleagues, those aren't your supervisors. We're wanting your, if you're talking about your work, we want it um, from your supervisor. Um, so be sure that you look really closely online about that. Um, the last thing to say is that your transcripts, there's information about your transcripts. Um, if you feel like waiting to upload your transcripts until you have your fall grades, that you feel like that's going to help your GPA, that's fine. Um, you can do that, but be sure to go online to read exactly what we need in terms of your transcripts. Pay your application fee and you're in good shape. 
So the last thing I want to say is be sure that you don't wait to the last minute. Technology, it is what it is, right? If you wait to submit your application on the day it's due, what if there are technology issues? What if your internet goes down? What if our internet goes down? So, you know, try to do it about a week ahead, I think is really good, um, if not more. And, you know, you'll usually have your fall grades um, uh, in by the end of December, so that shouldn't hold you up too much. Uh, last but not least, um, please reach out if you have questions. You'll see on our website there's an email address, so don't hesitate to contact us. Um, we really want you to be successful and to turn in a strong application. Um, that is our goal with this video and with the instructions we have on our website. Um, and so any way we can support that, you know, please let us know. All right, take good care and do a great application.